Experiment 4 is one of two labs involving the use of mass spectrometry. Now, you'll be using different types of instrumentation, but there are common features between them. So three points that I'd like you to all realize that, that relate to mass spectrometry are as follows. The first is that the compounds that we're going to measure will be in the gas phase. So that means that your samples, be they gases to begin with or in solution or even solids, we have to find a way to create a, a vapor to, to put them into the gas phase. The second thing is that the compounds must be ionized. In other words, they must carry a positive or negative charge. And this has to do with the way that the mass spectrometer can actually move these analytes. If they're neutral, there's no way to use a magnetic or electric field to carry them from one place to the next. And lastly, a mass spectrometer will measure or will separate compounds according to the mass to charge ratio. So it's not just the mass, we also have to deal with their charge. So to take an example, if we picture two compounds, one having a mass of 200 and the other a mass of 100 uh, atomic mass units, if they carry charges, as, as you see here, two and one, well, that technically means that the charge, m over z, uh, is equal between each of them. So a mass spectrometer will not initially distinguish between these two molecules because they have the same mass to charge. There are tricks to figure that out, which I will explain in the next videos that follow. <clears throat> For experiment four, the first type of mass spectrometer that we will work with is this one right here, a time of flight mass spectrometer. And uh, some of the basic characteristics of the instrument, uh, it has a very large mass range, so it can measure very small compounds all the way up to really massive ones uh, with a mass of 15,000. The resolution of the instrument uh, claims to be 10,000 m over delta m. I'll explain that, that notation uh, shortly. And the accuracy, which means how close it can measure the mass, uh, should be better than 10 parts per million. So we'll look more closely at how this instrument works. Uh, if we were to take that blue cover off, the inside of the mass spectrometer has this really large hollow metal tube. Uh, and then leading to that tube, we have another channel. The, the sample will be introduced at this point right over here. So this is the source region, and it works its way to the back end. That long tube is what we call a flight tube. So a time of flight mass spectrometer, which you'll probably figure out right away how this thing even works. Um, the, the channel leading into that is simply an ion guide because our compounds that are here have to work its way all the way to the back end and we don't want them to scatter out and disappear. So that, that keeps the ions focused. At the back end of that flight tube, we have our detector. So the ions will have to make their way from one end of that flight tube all the way to the other end. And this is simply a race to the finish line. So the faster it flies, um, we're going to be able to measure that time from one point to the other. To move the ions from one end to the other, uh, we're going to apply a high positive potential. So if you think about a positive charge applied here to a positive ion, that will repel, and it'll force this ion to the other end of the tube where it'll hit the detector. So if you know the timing that you turn on this voltage, and then the time that it hits the detector, that, that measurement re relates back to the mass of the compound. So it's not too complicated to figure out the equations behind this. We're dealing with kinetic energy, so one-half mv squared, where m is the mass of our molecule. Um, and then the kick, the, the potential energy that we apply back here, um, is, is directly what causes that, that kinetic energy of our molecule. So it's potential energy converted into kinetic energy. Um, so the higher the voltage that we apply, the faster these compounds will move. And here's just a little analogy to remember to think about what's going on. Uh, if you imagine that, that the kick uh, is that, that uh, repeller plate, the voltage that we're applying, and we're imagining to kick two different soccer balls, a small one and a really heavy one, that's a medicine ball right there. So if you were to do this, you can see that if you apply an equal force to kick that, that little soccer ball is going to fly pretty quick the big heavy one's going to be rolling along. So that will be the exact same scenario as these things move along. Uh, these will be the big ions, they move slower, and the small ions can run through that a lot quicker. Just a little bit of rearrangement of that equation above tells you that the mass to charge is related to uh, the voltage. This is that voltage right over here, um, together with the distance of that flight tube, which should be constant, and the, uh, the time that it takes. So there's a square term that relates to mass to charge. 
I'm not expecting you to, to, to know these equations or derive them or anything like that, um, but I think it is helpful to, to understand how this instrument actually operates.